Yeah. So now we were we were talking about two cases. One is uh, liquid water and ice, the solid water. So we were. Uh, I actually uh, was. I think I was using the skating example to show that the reason when you use a very sharp blade to skate is because you want to cause the ice to melt on high pressure so you, you can create a film. I think, Aaron, you, you told me about this, right? So it was you told me. No, no, you were like saying there's a water. I, I, and, uh, I said you, you speak the, you correct you speak the experience, <laughs> yes. That was true, because you, um, I was trying to reiterate what you told me about there is a water film in that. So those are all correct. But we want to put it into the thermodynamics context that we've been discussing. So obviously, this picture is not quite uh, uh, directly the same picture as your skating. So if you want to write skating, uh, if you apply some kind of force or a, a weight of a skater, um, and then the force has to, if you use like a very wide blade, obviously the force area is the pressure. So obviously if you have very um, sharp blade, you would get uh, this uh, smaller, let's cut this different. So this is much bigger than this. So obviously when you have a higher pressure, you can actually um, create the situation where you can get a small uh, film of water. But in thinking about this, actually we, um, we at I sometimes also make a mistake. I didn't quite uh, uh, realize that when you do this, you have to compare both the liquid and solid phase. So in this case, what you do is you can think of that if you want the uh, any the solid area to become so sure we have uh, the molars the molar gives energy. If you fix the temperature for the moment, you know the temperature is well at zero degrees Celsius in real. So. Um, when you apply pressure, you actually change for both the solid or liquid. <coughs> then you would actually use DT solid, solid, or and, and also liquid. So I mean, so if you actually cause the pressure increase, you know, this stuff obviously is bigger. Uh, so you add for every. In increased small pressure, you will um, cause some increase in Gibbs energy. Just basically, um, we, well, we, we kind of dropped off the uh, partial derivative because I noticed most of us, of us in this class have not seen partial derivative. So from here on, I'm going to just not use that term. But probably it's, it's not that complicated. All well, that just means that if we uh, fix our eye on just zero degrees, you know, so you're skinning the pond all of a sudden, nothing's going to change in the temperature. But the only difference is you can sharp your blade a little bit better than uh, what you some other skate situation. So you go there, you actually try to sharp it. Then you can, to set the parameter you can manipulate in this case is the, how sharp your uh, the blade actually is. Okay. Now, and that means we can manipulate the peak. Pressure, right? So your weight didn't change much. So now, so this what this really means is, um, at the very beginning, at zero degrees Celsius, when P equals one atm, the molar Gibbs energy of liquid, in this case, uh, a solid is equal. Now, this is only when P equals one atm. That means no weight being added on the on the uh, ice surface, right? Now, if you uh, apply pressure, which is body weight, area of the blade, now all the pressure was higher than 180. Here. Now, you can actually cause Gibbs energy change on both liquid and water, because they're all under the same pressure. The only question is, who is going to increase faster? Now, that's actually my question for the class. Now, I did all the talk until now, and why? Anybody want to 
Shemin, so this is where we actually get to the bottom of the, of the answer of what Aaron and I was trying to figure out why s skater want to shop the skate uh, before they get on the ice surface. The question is, obviously we already know the answer, right? We know when we skate, we actually cost ice melt. So that's a fact, even experience, before you step in this class. Now, I'm trying to say that that can be explained by what we did last week. And what we have done is we have shifted the equilibrium from this situation, because ice and the uh, liquid water were, they were happy at equilibrium, zero degree one ATM, but we don't want to then stay like that. I want more water. So clearly I'm causing ice to become water, but I, I'm trying to explain why that is the case when I do this. Aaron, you want to so give this another try? Another try. Yeah. So at the molar volume of, of, of solid water is more, right? That means that if you have the same change in pressure for both, then the, the, the Gibbs energy of the ice goes up more, and then it's more favorable to go back to water. There you go. You got it. Anybody else uh, uh, agree this interpretation? There's Melissa, you nodded. But uh, Melissa, so you want to explain why the molar volume of ice is bigger than the liquid? Or do you know as a fact? Because it's more dense. More dense or? or sorry, less dense, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, I make the same. You say that's the last week I did the same. Sometimes your head thinking of one thing, but your mouth come out another thing. I know you were trying to say one. Yeah, that's why. But this is a quite interesting because it was quite special in the case for ice because quite not the many cases where the solid had the uh, lower density than liquid. So this really only can work on ice if you actually go to some you could be on Titan, the the frozen is all hydrocarbon. The density was higher than liquid, so it won't work if you, you know. so that is you need to work on a surface where the solid density was actually lower than the liquid, then this principle would work. So that's pretty Okay, so this is a sort of a coming back. We spent we spent a little bit of mathematical saying we want to come back to make sure it uh, it can still uh, be used to explain the, uh, the, the, these common uh, life experience. Now, okay, so the second, okay, Diego? Can you re explain again? Because of this, because the volume, the volume, the more volume of the solid is bigger, how uh, increases the pressure for it. Yeah, let's, uh, okay, so Diego basically want to, so I want to be uh, a little bit slow on this one. So let's just say, uh, now I increase this to a new pressure. It's a bigger pressure. Mm -hmm. So uh, if everybody else increase the same way, they'll still continue, right? So but uh, the solid definitely increase at a speed of a slope, right? That slope is basically equivalent of the uh, derivative, right? So this is the molar volume of the slope of the solid. So the for the liquid, it is increased at another slope. There's a model volume of liquid. And Aaron uh, just explained the slope of this is bigger. So therefore, for a same amount increase of the pressure, this guy increased much higher. So this uh, solid have a higher free energy, higher potential. They want to roll down, so they start to melt. Make sense? Yeah. Um, and oh. so, like, what yeah. that would actually look like in real life would be an increase of pressure which would just make the ice melt, but not necessarily the temperature of the water go up? Yeah, we can assume the, the temperature it should be maintained the same. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's right. So that's a, I mean, <laughs> I, I, ideally when you start skating, some people might say, yeah, there's a friction going on. Well, you know, it's, it's probably true, too. But uh, we're saying that before we even do any friction, you just step on it at the moment. And there's no movement. You can see the water melt. That's basically so. So we can actually, but in real life, when you're skating, there are probably other stuff going on. But uh, the moment you step on it, there's no friction, no whatsoever. The, the ice, in principle, should melt a little bit. Okay. Now let's go on my own sort of embarrassing mistake uh, on the second case, where I actually kind of 
I, I was doing something similar to what Melissa is doing. I'm thinking something, but I'm saying something I know is not right. And then at the end of the class, I realized I made a mistake. So that is the second uh, uh, phase transition involved in water. And here, we talk about the water uh, boiling into a gas phase away from So uh, uh, what I was saying at the time, I was saying, hey, because I was trying to make a point that you can manipulate Gibbs energy of a system by to go around the pressure. So that was the ice skating example. But more often, actually, we do is we just simply inject the heat to the system. And we are so comfortable with inject heat to the system, uh, we increase internal energy, entropy. So it's so intuitive, right? But this is something that, that's how you got me confused or lost. So I was saying, oh, well, okay, at the 1 ATM, 25 degrees Celsius, the water is not going to boil to the gas because the vapor pressure is insufficient to push the 1 ATM up. So in this case, you can actually say uh, they, if we actually use the gas phase 1 ATM water or the um, liquid, 25 degrees Celsius of water. I mean, clearly this cannot climb up. This has a much higher Gibbs energy than this. So I was saying, oh, well, let's heating it up. And then I start saying something about, oh, yeah, the Gibbs energy increase, and then we'll finally catch to the 118 this time boil. So <laughs> I think uh, now, hopefully, you can point out my mistake after you see this equation. In fact, quite a few. Um, I think Aaron, here, who I forgot, some others in company. Like Professor Chen, that just makes really sense. Because your equation just tell me that when you heat up something, the gift energy is actually drop. Uh, now, that's already strange, right? Because wait a minute, you're heating something, something's energy drop. But that's why gift energy is such a weird thing. If it's not like an internal hands of it. It actually involves it being random. So uh, so if you go back to the definition, it's entropy minus Ts. If Ts is always positive, if you increase entropy, you kind of you know mess it up even more so the Ts can become very big. So that's the I mean, if you think about it, if you really want to give some kind of molecular interpretation, that's the cause of of the uh, entropy being positive. So in this case, uh, we again we should keep in mind. Uh, we I I'm actually don't I'm not going to even repeat the argument here. But this is actually much more obvious. Um, you can the molar gives energy of liquid. And you can do the same kind of uh, so, and then you will uh, arrive at a conclusion which is probably much easier to be explained rather than I try to draw it. But uh, it's the exact same principle uh, we, we use to uh, explain the. How the ice. So basically what we were doing here is that we cause, when we heat it up, we actually cause uh, 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 energy change on the two phases that in equilibrium. Right? Or they're supposed to compare. So that is if you compare the two phases, how they actually going to be spontaneous, you should consider both. You can't just ignore the other guy. So it was actually earlier when we, um, when we actually um, uh, because we are trying to compare both of them. When you apply heating or pressure, in this case, pressure is affecting on both phase. The, the gas comes out at the moment, they also carry that temperature. So basically, you need to look at the Gibbs, molar Gibbs energy of both liquid phase, and then uh, it's pretty, it's, uh, this one's even no-brainer, because the molar Gibbs energy of the gas phase 
is much much bigger than the liquid because it's so random. So it was so in the in the in the liquid one, the, in the ice. Um, solid physics is actually trickier because most of the time you would think solid has a higher density, but just for water it was the inverse one. But for this one it's almost no brainer, like you always know for any given matter, its model gives entropy in the gas phase, it's going to be much larger than the molar entropy in its liquid state. So when you're heating up the sample, the Gibbs energy of the gas phase is going to die down nose dive with the liquid going much shallower. So it's the same slope except going up and going down. So who can go down first? So then after a little while, the liquid start being higher than the uh, gas phase gives energy, and then start to boil. So that's its principle. It's, it's uh, quite uh, clearly explained in this uh, slide. Aaron? There's a little region over there where it goes to gas, it goes solid to gas over liquid. What is, what is going on with that? Good question. Can anybody is that like just the so if someone can give me an example, if you ever work in the lab or if you go to Las Vegas and watch some show, beautiful smoke come out. What do they do there? Dry eyes. And what do they call? Submersion. So this this phase picture or uh, it's one way to explain phase water. Pattern. Well it, it doesn't have to be uh, water, but it, this is carbon dioxide. Oh yeah, that makes sense. But other matters can happen. This particular phase diagram uh, is just showing generic. It could be. The, the way they cross to each other, it really all depends on what matter you're dealing with. It could be uh, water. It could be CO2. Uh, one of the old question examples, which is my favorite one, is uh, the three phases of uh, carbon. Right? You have graphite. You have diamond. Um, so these are all the same materials. They can exist in different phases. And the transition between them, they don't even have to be a liquid gas water. They can be just simply the same solid. Or they, they could be different kind of internal structure. Those structure can be also considered different phases. So in the, in the graphite and diamond case, they are the same solid, but they are different phases. And then their phase transition can also be explained by phase diagram. So, um, so just this one basically segues uh, into. I'm not going to repeat this. So if you kind of know the rationale of this, this one's relatively straightforward, easier because no one is going to challenge me on why the molar entropy of matter's gas is bigger than the liquid because it's, it's much more uh, random disorder. Um, so. And so basically, you can plot any gang matter's molar gives energy at a constant uh, pressure with a temperature, and you get various plot as how they change. And then whenever you see a liquid solid crossover, that just representing the situation we see here. Right, at a certain pressure, uh, when fixed pressure, at a certain temperature, their molar gives energy become equal. That's when we call a phase transition point where it gives a molar gives energy of each phase become equal. And so this is how it, if you think of this as water, this is the familiar melting point of water. Now and whenever there's a gas and liquid crossover point, that's when the molar gives energy of the uh, liquid and, and the gas phase became equal. And this is the typical uh, what we're familiar with, we call boiling point water. And Aaron already had a quick eye. He already